Anybody want to speak against the bill? Okay, all right. Mr. Roberts, you can probably just let him know. He'll introduce yourself. I'm Alan Roberts. I'm the other lawyer. <laughs> Just so we need another lawyer. Y'all don't need another. <laughs> I represent I represent the Camden Fairness Real District. Now the right is real district. We take uh, exception to some of the constitutional uh, comments that were made. Is, but I want to amplify on what Jeff said it all. There are different opinions on it. Uh, we feel like uh, that the bill in its present form would be still because it doesn't have adequate protection protection. Two quick points, you got two problems in Arkansas with desegregation or resegregation. The first is the residual effects of mandatory racial segregation in the state for so long. Uh, in particular, this involves federal court orders and just dealt with uh, was dealt with in one place and no law is dealt with in the key field. Uh, but there is another problem, and that is our history of um, the general assemblies of encouraging and facilitating private acts of discrimination for choice options that are nothing more than in, that were nothing more than thinly failed attempts to avoid constitutional obligations. The problem with this bill is that when Judge Dawson strikes the old F1, you take away the only protection that school choice offered against the kind of, of voluntary private discrimination that we talk about. That is a problem. It's a problem that will continue. I think it is a problem that could be resolved in the these councils. Uh, uh, I don't disagree with what uh, my brother Askew said about race, specifically the race is the only option. I would urge the committee to give continued consideration to some of the options that you have before you. Uh, I can't imagine any solution to this that would be, be that would be better than to have Senator Keyes, Senator Elliot, Jess Ashton, and Alan Roberts come before you with a bill that we all agree to serve both purposes and both matters of this Constitution. The Attorney General, of course, would have something to say about it, um, and, and I would like to hear it. Um, <laughs> uh, there's also something to be said for. Senator Cheatham's position, Senator or Jess is going to win the lawsuit, well, then I don't see any reason why we don't wait for that. Then we can figure out what we can do for that yes. lawsuit. Yes. Uh, it might happen that way. Um, there are, the biggest problem with the bill, as I say, is, is the constitutionality. That's coming from a lawyer. I got two quotes that are like Jesse's quotes, both from a circuit court opinions. I'll paraphrase them so I know it takes a long. One was the Elderator School case, Kim versus Beasley, uh, back in the early 70s, uh, in which a circuit said we must recognize freedom of choice for what it is. It was thinly disguised again to avoid the Elderator School District's constitutional obligation. I put the freedom of choice in, it didn't result in anybody going to any school any different than they did before they put the plan. Um, the other proposition is one that I've said before. This is it's, it's from another Eighth Circuit case that says it is also axiomatic that the state may not induce, encourage, or promote private persons to accomplish what is constitutionally if the state is constitutional. To what we're talking here. Do something. Uh, intention will be imputed to you if you pass a law or 
to do anything else, and you know that the natural and probable consequences of that law would happen are to accomplish a particular goal. It will have a particular result. In the Malvern case, my fellow case, or whatever you want to call it, it was uh, there were two witnesses who testified by opinion and stipulation on the effect of you know, who they are to. Uh, it was not disputed in that case that, that free and unrestricted choice would result in widespread rapid resegregation of the entire southern part of the state. Uh, those gentlemen are here today. They have the same opinion that you've already heard. And, uh, as I, as Senator P pointed out, I spoke against this bill was before it was the time But anyway, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Guest uh, and Bob Watson are both present today. Mr. Robinson, I do have one question for you, please, if you'll take that question. Um, you mentioned potential for resegregation. Would you just give me a, a, a quick um, little lesson on what you mean by that and what the court said, said about Well, it, it is a return to the situation of racially identifiable schools. Instead of school substitute school districts. District. One of the big constitutional problems, uh, and, and it will be very interesting see what the Eighth Circuit said about it because the case that Judge Dawson relied on, which was uh, two, two separate United States Supreme Court decisions, they dealt with a political subdivision that was an individual school district. And they ruled on the pupil attendance policy within that political subdivision. All nine justices agreed that if there had been a remedial use of a race as a factor, a single factor, in those, in either one of those political subdivisions, it would have been constitutional. All nine justices agreed that there was no remedial purpose there. One never had any segregation, the other one had been declared unitary for some years. Now, here, in, in, in the Malvern slash Magnet Code case, you have uh, an inter-district choice proposition. It impacts a single subdivision. What is a single subdivision? The whole state of Arkansas. Is there a remedial problem with the vestiges of segregation from the legal segregation days still remaining in any part of Arkansas? Where are we now? What school is it? Of course, there's still a remaining problem. All right. Uh, Sarah, attention. Yeah, just real quick. Uh, you mentioned intention. I guess what I would ask is this. If, if we put into legislation that there is no race provision, our intention would be clear that we want the decision to be based on what the parents think is the best for the student. But you mentioned the concern that you had is the court's going to do what you call intention imputation or that they're going to impute from our action and I guess what I would ask you is do you really think that the court or anybody here would believe that our intention of anyone in this committee is to lead, do something with the intent of leading the segregation yes I do well I, I think that is wow. a cheap shot and to be honest with you nobody here in fact I, I, I'll, I think that all of us would agree that none of us want to go to a segregated school system. That's not the intent, and I think for you to say that is a complete misunderstanding of what we're trying to do with school choice. It's not about separating blacks from whites or leading to a school system like it was decades ago. It's about trying to make a decision that is best for everybody without the right to race. Don't shoot that. Yeah. The point is that it will have the result creating racially identifiable But again, you didn't mention the result, you said intent. The court would take from this action that our intent is to do something that would lead to segregation. And again, I think that's, that, that's going to be a hard need for anyone for reason to make is that our intent sitting here today is to pass legislation with the intent 
that leads to segregated education. It doesn't require specific That's wrong. If, if, if you pass a law knowing that it will have a particular result, you're presumed to have intended that that result follows. But the Congress is also true. We pass a stipulation that says there will be a race provision in it. There's no question about our intent then. Is we are making it very clear that we want to do something based on race. Prevent segregation. Based on race. Yes. Prevent, and again, it goes prevent. back to the fundamental question we talked about last time is, I don't believe that this uh, <coughs> obligation that we have as a society to do things, which we should do, is we, when a school is decide where to locate a school, we should take actions that we can to minimize segregation issues. But I don't think that that desire to lead to a, a system that doesn't have segregation trumps the ability for our students to get a quality education. I don't either. You know, you've got your, your act of 227, I guess, which lets anybody leave a, a, a family school. Yes. It just went into effect. That is, they write everybody now in a failing school district for two years. You can go anywhere you want to, any time, regardless of race or anything else. What seems, what perplexes me, Senator, and, and other people is that, is that not a remedy that will, will solve some of the problems that, that Mr. Askew alluded to, some of the problems that you people have alluded to? without putting a free and unrestricted system in place that would <coughs> inarguably result in de facto segregation in a large part of the state. I mean, inarguably, I can say the guys that know the most about it, that anybody in the world are sitting right behind me, and it will happen. I wish you would take it into consideration. I wish you would try to work out some solution to it that perhaps Mr. Askew and I can agree on that we pass constitution. We have another question. Uh, Senator Rayburn, are you finished? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be worthy of one last second. Mr. Roberts? Yes. What would motivate you to make such an inflammatory statement of the character of this committee? I don't intend to the character of this committee. Yeah, you just did. I am an integrationist because I believe that. So, so are we. And so why did you take this venue on this matter to impugn the character of this country in the way that you have? All I've said is that you have before you a bill that will promote segregation in a particular area of the state. I don't see how I impugn your character by saying that if you disagree that that's a fact, that's one thing. But if you agree that it's a fact, what have I said that impugns your character? Well, sir, I just think too many times people too loosely throw that charge around, and it's wrong. And and I can tell you that uh, the testimony given by the lady just behind you to the left, uh, and I forget her name, but she was very clear. What the parents of this state want is the quality education for their children. And I frankly am tired of seeing some of the uh, actions taken that continue to inhibit the state of Arkansas to move forward. What you have done, and frankly what the courts have done, has not improved the quality of education in the state of Arkansas. Now, the matter of desegregation is one thing, and I'm glad that we have taken steps to make sure that we integrate our schools. But I can tell you that uh, I take objection to what you've said. And I also will tell you, as I've just stated, it's very clear, that the intervention of many of the people into the affairs of the education in the state of Arkansas has not improved the quality of the education or the performance for our students in many cases. And so I would just ask you in the future, and I know you argue for a living, but I would ask you to be careful to not impugn the character of the people on this committee because we believe that we are doing the right thing and we are representing our constituents appropriately in this matter. And if you want to argue that the parents in the state of Arkansas do not have the, what I would call the superior right to have a choice on whether students attend school. But we can take that up at another time. That's all I have. Are there any other questions for Mr.
Roberts. If not, Mr. Roberts, thank you for your time. You have a question? Oh, yes, it's a uh, 